I know, I know, it's 10.56. I got a little distracted. What's Jack Blank in the imagination theories? Some guy's first whole trilogy. So if you read it, and be, be, be fair, it's his first trilogy. His first book trilogy, his first book. So, um, be nice, be fair. Go into understanding. It's the first one, and apparently it's good enough to make a trilogy out of. <sighs> People like it enough. Ah, yes. Books. Oh yes. Now, the Queen of Sheba, S-H-E-B-A, visits Solomon. Now I need to tell you a little story. Sheba is also known as Ethiopia, or is a city or kingdom in Ethiopia or something. It has something to do with Ethiopia. And the Ethiopians believe, or at least the Ethiopian monarchy, back when it was a monarchy, I know is it now, but it was at one point. So back when it was an empire monarchy, the first Ethiopian emperor, empire, em emperor, even though technically it wasn't really Ethiopia back then, it was called something different, but it was practically, yeah, Ethiopia claimed to be a descendant of Solomon, claiming that Sheba went to Solomon and, and they did, well, things. And uh, she, the queen, went back and gave birth, supposedly, to the first emperor of Ethiopia. Is it true? Maybe, maybe not. Does it make the Israelites African? No. No, that's got like a whole lot of people mad. But the thing is with Ethiopia, there are Ethiopian Jews, Ethiopians, who do have of DNA recognizes it like DNA of Jews so have Jewish ancestors and I think are recognized as true official Jews by Israel yeah you didn't know that was a thing did you so it's also like a Jewish population in India too but that's not right now so yeah so it could be possible, but, yeah, that could just be a legend. Now, why would the Ethiopian emperor declare himself to be the descendant of Solomon? Hey, Solomon was a wise king, so, you know. But it's just interesting. Interesting little story. Also, Ethiopia was like one of the first ever countries to turn Christian. I think it was second. First was Armenia, then Ethiopia. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, Ethiopia is a biblical nation. It comes a little late in the Bible, though, but when it shows up, it is pretty important. So pay attention for Ethiopia. Not just some one-off nation. Anyway, this is going to be 1 Kings chapter 10, verses 1 through 
13. When the Queen of Sheba heard about the fame of Solomon and his relationship to the Lord, she came to test Solomon with hard questions. You have no idea what these questions will be. Use your imagination. What would be considered a hard question? Uh, maybe like legal quandaries and mathematics, moral quandaries, things like that. Arriving at Jerusalem with a very great caravan, with camels carrying spices, large quantities of gold, and precious stones, she came to Solomon and talked with him about all that she had on her mind. Solomon answered all her questions. Nothing was too hard for the king to explain to her. When the king of Sheba saw that the wisdom of Solomon and that the palace he had no, and the palace he had built Remember, she's just doing this this to test Solomon, to make sure he's up to snuff and he actually is smart, as everyone is saying he is. And why is he, he is? So, some of the questions you may already know the answer to. Others she might know, and just want to know. But it's all a test. She's testing him. Anyway, the food is the food on his table, the seating of his officials, the attending servants in their robes, his cupbearers, and the burnt offerings he made at. Oh wait, there's a thing. Uh, or the accents by which he went up to okay the temple of the Lord she was overwhelmed <laughs> okay she said to the king the report I heard in my own country about your activities, no, no, about your achievements and your wisdom is true, but I did not believe these things until I came and saw with my own eyes. Indeed, not even half was told to me. Wow. <coughs> In wisdom and wealth, you have far exceeded the report I heard. How happy your people must be. How happy your officials, who continuously stand before you and hear your wisdom. <coughs> Praise be to the Lord your God, who has delegated, who has delighted in your, you and placed you on the throne of Israel, because the Lord. No, because of the Lord's eternal love for Israel. He has made you king to maintain justice and righteousness. <laughs> Again, monotheism, they went mad, and that's totally normal. And also, why would you go to somebody you're clearly having friendly attentions to and just call them God's fake right front of face in their own country? That seems stupid. Even though Ethiopia is like nowhere near Israel. Israel. I mean, you can travel between the two. It wouldn't be that hard. There's the Nile. There's the Red Sea. You can do it. Do it to trade. Especially even during Roman times. It's just 
probably not a country he would bother going to war with. Anyway, and she gave the king 120 talents. That is... Hmm... Where is it? Where is it? That is about four and a half tons, or about four metric tons of gold, large quantities of spices and precious stones. Never again were so many spices brought in as those the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Hmm. Harams, H I. Hiram, H I R A M S. Oh, yeah, seven, eight, wait. Ships brought the gold from Ophir. O P H I R. And from there. They brought great cargoes of almagol wood. What? Probably a valiant variant of all gum wood. Also in verse twelve. <laughs> okay. And precious stones. The king used the almug, um, almug, wood to make sports supports. Probably a variant. Right. The meaning of the Hebrew for this word is uncertain. Sports. What else could braces, pillars, I don't know, for the temple of the Lord and for the royal palace and to make harps and lyres for the musicians. So the Olmog wood had never been imported. No, so much Olmog wood has never been imported or seen since that day. I don't know what the modern day Israel's imports of wood and spices are. But ancient day. And yes, oh, Solomon had allies that like giving him stuff. How is that? Not everyone wanted to kill each other back then. Around people. King Solomon gave the Queen of Sheba all she desired and asked for, besides what he had given her out of his royal bounty. Then she left and returned with her and then she left and returned with her routine to her own country. He. Ethiopia. Now, of course, say, probably is this someone trying to claim power by claiming their link to Solomon and potentially there's no proof. Place this answer to a little story. Now, isn't it? <laughs> 